Welcome to Spill the Tea with Josephine. Today I'm talking to Mary Seifert, who writes the Katie and Maverick Cozy Mysteries. So, welcome to Spill the Tea. And today I have Mary with me, and she writes Cozy Mysteries. And I really love your Katie and Maverick series. I think it's just awesome. And I also, you know, something that I thought was really cute when I first saw the books is all your titles are alliterations. They are. They are. <laughs> So the, yeah, the inspiration behind that? Everything on the cover came from the publisher. Oh. They decided that um, because it's a cozy mystery and it's a series, hopefully a long series, mm -hmm. um, in the upper right-hand corner is a puzzle piece. And inside the puzzle piece is the number of the book that you're reading in the series so that you don't go in blind. Um, there's a banner across the center, which tells you a little bit about the story. That's the photo. My name is across the top and the alliterative title is across the bottom. And that was kind of exciting because we were coming up with different titles. When I originally wrote the series, book number one was called Titanic Cocktail. Oh, because cool. there's a Titanic cocktail based on the last cocktail that they served the night of the Titanic. It was a punch romaine. So I we developed a cocktail that was like that. Um, but wisely, the publisher said, when you say Titanic anything in a title, it immediately takes the reader, and you did, to 1912. And these are not historical novels. They are contemporary. So they were right. And they switched them to alliteration. <laughs> <I love them. laughs> They're so cute. So why don't you tell me a little bit more about your Cozy Mystery series and your lovely heroine? Uh, Katie mm -hmm. is um, a math teacher at a high school. She had originally dreamed of working for the NSA. She loved working puzzles. She loved figuring out codes, encoding, decoding. And she is particularly enamored with the history of the code girls, all those women in history that did the work in the background that they haven't gotten. Oh, I think you froze for until a little bit. And what she wanted to be. They got in the way. And um, her husband died. Or oh. um, very very soon after they got married, her husband died. So she decided that wasn't something that she wanted to do and she became the math teacher. So that's my cozy heroine. Um, he also had a dog that had puppies. And after he died, one of those puppies was given to Katie. And she didn't really know that she wanted a dog all that much <laughs> until she grew to love the dog. And of course the dog saved her life. That really made a difference. Um, and that's Maverick. So we have Cody, Katie and Maverick in all of my stories. That's cool. So what made you decide to become a cozy mystery writer? I wrote my first story, short story, uh, when I was in college and I submitted it to Good Housekeeping and I got my first of many rejections. Um, so I always like to try to write. And uh, not too long ago, I guess it's a long time ago, but I was at a baseball game that we have in Wilmer, which is where I live. Um, and one of my friends said, what'd you do today? And I said, I was writing a story and I had written a lot of stories, but only the beginning. And she said, can I read it? And I said, no, I haven't finished it. And she said, well, then finish it. <laughs> so, I, and that ended up that first cozy mystery. Oh, cool. And um, so I think you've got five or six books now. Today is the seventh. Seventh. Good number. <laughs> Good number. And you obviously you must enjoy it. Have you written anything else or, or besides the cozies to be published? Very little. I have four adult children, but when my kids mm -hmm. were little, I thought I could write science fiction fantasy. <laughs> um, I couldn't. Those worlds were way beyond me. I love to read about them, but I couldn't uh, write my own. Um, so I'd start the first 10 pages and and then I start another 10 pages and that didn't work either. But I, I really have always loved mysteries. So that was mm -hmm. kind of a, a first love come to the front. Yeah. So what made you um, think of writing cozy mysteries yourself? Like, um, was there a particular author or a particular series that you really enjoyed that you thought, oh, I could try and, and do that? I I love Agatha Christie. I think she's marvelous. Um, I read all of hers and I, I loved Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I think they were classics. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have a lot of mystery writers in Minnesota that I wanted to emulate. And Minnesota's good for mysteries. Um, <laughs> and I, I thought that I could maybe come up with a story that might be like um, the stories that Joanna Fluke wrote or that uh, Laura Childs writes. Um, I had a teacher, David Housewright is an author in Minnesota. Uh, he teaches at The Loft and, and he's a mystery author. Um, and I loved his style. It is not cozy. Uh, I originally thought I was going to just write a mystery. 
But when you look back at what I wrote, I did have my heroine not being someone in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. She was um, just a teacher. Um, I didn't have a lot of graphic violence. I didn't have romance on the page. It was sort of like maybe dreaming off in the in the, off the page someplace. I didn't use a lot of bad language. So when the publisher looked at the story, they said, "Let's just cut this down. This really is a cozy um, kind of uh, on the edge of a mystery." So mm -hmm. it's sort of like a throwsy. Yeah, throwsy. Really, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> So why don't you tell us a little bit of something about yourself, something, you know, interesting. Um, I was a math teacher. So oh, okay. stories about the math teacher uh, are reminiscent of the stories that my students had as well. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked teaching. I stopped teaching when I had my first child because um, I was chasing after my husband. He was off going to school in different places. And so I, I kind of had to follow him. So it was kind of hard to get a job and keep a job. And, and I loved being able to be home with them. It was absolutely fabulous. Mm -hmm. uh, great opportunity. Um, then I um, I love to read. I've always loved to read. My grandfather had a library, a small library. And I was sort of that in-between age cousin. I wasn't mm -hmm. old enough to go out with the, old, the older ones. And I wasn't young enough to go to the park all the time. And he said, if you bring back the book that you take out from my library, you can read anything you want, take it home with you. Um, so I read, you know, the re the regulars, uh, Black Beauty. I read Heidi. I read National Velvet. I didn't tell my mother. I also read uh, The Great Escape. I read um, Dr. Shivago. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I brought them back. And his favorite was Mysteries. So he had an entire shelf of Ellery Queen magazines that I just, you know, you devour those because they're short stories and you can wrap them up in a, in a very short time. Um, so I, I always really, really love to read. And I, I, uh, I'm i very fortunate that my mother liked to read mysteries and we'd pass them around between the two of us. And then uh, my younger sisters like to read. So now we do it with all of us. And we all have children and grandchildren. And um, we have a book club. It's called the Mothers and Daughters Book Club. And our first book was uh, Mothers and Daughters Murder Night. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. I hear you're also a member of Sisters in Crime. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, that is a group that is so supportive of fellow crime writers. Um, I have been at a few because I, I'm relatively new. Uh, the first book came out in 2022. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been to a few of the events, some book author fairs and some book sales. And um, I have met some of the Minnesota sisters, in, Twin City Sisters in Crime. They also have their meetings. So I've met some online. But they have been so supportive and so fun and so um, so uh, they and kind. They they come up to you at these events and they introduce themselves and they take pictures and they put it back on the the web page. Um, and they're so smart. You know, you should probably think about. And then um, the advice they give is always right on. It's just it's really really been fun. Uh, my husband gave me a ball for Christmas that lights up because he saw it on one of the other Twin City Sisters in Crime tables. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've got a, a ball <laughs> that lights up. So that's something that you definitely recommend for anybody else who's writing mysteries. Yes, because they're they're just very supportive. They have <clears throat> excuse me, they have they have courses online. They have uh, videotaped classes. Um, they also have classes that you can join monthly it, for different twin city uh, or different groups of sisters in crime i belong to the twin city sister in crime minneapolis and st paul but they're all over and every one of them has their own meetings and they offer their information to all crime writers well that's cool that's very cool so your latest book uh what's the title of it and it was released recently <laughs> but it's creeps cash and corpses that's my alliteration. It's got my dog on the front here. There's my dog. Oh, beautiful. Uh, it's I, I love the dogs that they put on the cover there. They're black lab side is what I have. Um, and I, I just think they're really fun covers that way. But this book takes place in my hometown, New Prague, mm -hmm. Minnesota, um, at a mansion uh, that is used as a bed and breakfast or as a, a kind of my bed and breakfast would probably be the best way to describe it. And of course, they're going geocaching with students and they find a body <laughs> as as is the way in cozy mysteries <laughs> sort of always happens and um they find the body and then katie and her dog maverick try and figure out 
who actually committed the crime because the person that was arrested is someone that they know and love and they don't want that to have any bearing on the final page of the book. So of course they have to solve the mystery and, and help their friend out. Exactly. They got to, yeah, got to solve the mystery. They've got to figure it out. Even though all of the policemen there say, stay out of it, go away, don't do anything. You know, you're just an amateur. Yes. They do it anyway. <laughs> And uh, so I'm going to have all of your links in our bio for anybody who wants to find out more about this wonderful book. And uh, I was going to say it's it's available pretty much on all platforms, right? Yes, it is. Okay. So thank you so much for coming on, Mary. I really appreciate you taking your time to come talk to us and visit with us and spill the tea. And thank you. Uh, hopefully, maybe for your next book, you can come back and, and show it off as well. Oh, I love that. Thank you very much. <laughs>